So I, I'm always interested in the abdomen. This, this abdomen of ours, it's like a bag of groceries, organs. And you put a bag of groceries on the table or wherever, over time those cans and bottles are going to shift a little. And this is an area we totally lose tone in. Uh, or need to be aware of enough to have some semblance of tone. And the fifth hour reintroduces that, that lift. Uh, we've kind of done it three-dimensionally through the first three sessions and the fourth session, but now, now we start to, um, our intention is to begin to give length there and a certain amount of awareness of tone and in the first throughout the series throughout the advanced work I'm using the pelvic list lift as my pel as my evaluative tool ideally when I say curl your pelvis under or curl your pelvis forward up I want to see it literally curl up and I want to see the pelvis come down like a wave on the shoreline I not I just want to see this one vertebrae at a time. In the beginning, if there's a lot of compression, uh, they kind of lift the pelvis up. They don't curl it. They don't curl it up, but it just gets lifted up. And after the work on the fifth session, you're going to, that's one of the things you want to intend to see. You don't want to tell them to do it that way. You want them to do it and then Make, have them then make note of it. There used to be a, uh, what's his name, the mountain climber, the rock climber, Adam in um, uh, Boulder? One of them. Yeah, Slavic. Slavic was my model in the class, and uh, uh, Slavic is a rock climber. I mean, this guy goes up like a spider, just... Uh, you know, and he goes, Neil, come rock climbing with me. I go, ah. <laughs> but anyway, he took me rock climbing, and I had all these ropes uh, attached to me. But he, his ability to crawl was just mind-boggling. But, but he also was so contracted here. And even when uh, we were talking, he'd go, ha, 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 You know, he'd, as long as it was funny, uh, his, uh, he would go like this. So we're at Peter's class, uh, it's, the, it's the end of the session, and I, I just say, don't, you don't want to, you want to wait for it to happen. Uh, in other words, the lengthening. So we're at the party and people are on their drums and, you know, the usual beers and the outside guys are doing their thing. And Slavic says something, or I say something, and he goes, ha, 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 and the whole room goes, stops. <laughs> the cans of beer are like this, the drummer's like this. And... Suavik, and it, it just happened, and I said, Suavik, did you see, feel what happened? He goes, mm, yeah, maybe. Uh, but what he did is he let go of a pattern. Even though it was once, it's the beginning of change. And uh, that's when I'll bring that to a person's attention. After they've done it, I, don't, I, I want it to happen. And then I go, did you notice anything different? Uh, well, uh, no, or sometimes yes, or I don't think. I say, no, I don't want you to think. Did you feel anything different? Yeah, m maybe, uh, maybe I brought it up differently. And, but I use the pelvic lift as an evaluative tool throughout my work. I'll do a pelvic lift five, six times a session. I'm feeling for the weight of the pelvis. I'm feeling for the weight of the lumbar spine. I'm waiting to just pull a little on the lower back, and if the head starts to nod, I know that connection, both directions, is happening. Just a little pelvic lift, does the chin, well, the chin's not nodding, okay, well, I'll find out where it may be restricting. So the pelvic motion in the fifth hour is extremely important. I just want to add that after the fifth hour, is a good time to start doing self-pelvic lifts and guiding your clientele to do self-pelvic lifts. And um, the beauty of that is what Neil was just talking about. It reminds people that their lumbars are segmented and not a, a block or a unit. Because, you know, early on people want to lift the whole thing. Oh, yeah, get that out of the way. Um, but um, 
uh, the, the the self pelvic tilt and when I trained uh, when I audited actually 76 um, we were supposed to do that you know five or more times before we even got out of bed start the day with some good self pelvic lifts but it, the, the and and the thing about the self pelvic lift is you don't want to use the rectus abdominis to do it. You don't want to use the hamstrings too much or the, or, or, or the uh, quadriceps too much or even the adductors, but that the psoas starts to rest back and that the, 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 the pelvis starts to come up evenly. The legs are parallel, the feet are parallel, and the adductors are doing their work of keeping things relative to the midline and then slowly the pelvis from the inside starts to be lifted so the psoas and the iliacus are doing their job so we've freed up the sleeve enough so that the those those core structures are able to function independently or relatively independently or shall we say with diminished um, interference from the chronic holding pattern of the sleeve as it's been in the past. And you, you know, play with that while you're here and, and, and do the self pelvic lift, curl the pelvis up and um, let it go up to where you start to get uh, up to the first and second uh, lumbar so that, and then, and then let it down. And allow yourself to do it with just the bones, if you will so that the bones are starting to move independently of a lot of myofascial work. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the legs. I know we're getting limited time. A little bit about the legs. Um, first hour, ITB. First hour, hamstrings. Second hour, a little bit of the quadricep attachment above the knee. Fourth hour, medial. What's left? Quadriceps. Quadriceps, fifth session. You want to start to address the quadriceps in the fifth session. If you haven't done in previous sessions, some of us in the second hour do some uh, quadricep work. But... That's the start, that's the beginning of trying to get these various tilts in the pelvis to start to ease up, to get the way the legs hold on to the pelvis to start to lengthen. So in my fifth hours, I'll work on the quadriceps. After I've done that, I'll go to the inguinal ligament. And the first thing I do is I try, I feel one inguinal ligament will be stronger often than the other. And there's an interesting pattern between the tighter inguinal ligament on this side and the tighter sacrotuberous ligament on the other side. There's a relationship of holding that may not be just those two tendons, ligaments, but they're related. I know they're related. Kind of one of the things we used to say to Dr. Rolf is, well, why is that the way it is? And she'd answer it, and then we'd say, well, why is it the way it is that the way it is? And she'd say, I just know. In other words, no more questions. The, uh, but there's certain things we do in our work where we just know. I mean, the reasoning, the, the A equals B equals C, uh, it's beyond it. There's something innate that we know, and I know there's something between that inguinal ligament on this side and the sacrotuberous ligament on the other side, because I've seen it enough that I know there's a pattern there. So quadricep work in the fifth session. You, you've kind of circled the leg, and then in the sixth hour, of course, you do the back of the leg. Yeah. I was just going to say quadriceps in the relation to the adductors as well as the hamstrings, starting to think about that larger set of patterns in how the legs are supporting the pelvic pattern. Once again, we're starting the process of horizontalizing and stabilizing the pelvis in space and on the femurs. So it gives, the, it gives our clientele a new opportunity to perceive themselves different in space. <laughs> 